there is a very nasty issue we are dealing as a software engineers in our systems that is concurrency issue so it is really hard to debug this and really hard to even predict this this is caused by concurrency issue because i have seen some cases which happen in a microsecond level it not even a millisecond so even your log doesn't support to debug that it really you need to predict it this is what's happening and so you need to go after that hunch and to figure it out what's going on so it's really really complicated i'm going to explain you the easy way you can solve this type of problem because most of the concurrent problem causing the way we handle the concurrency right for example i mean there are different i mean maybe hundreds of ways to deal with this but i'm going to explain you very simple way to deal with this in a distributed environment so let's assume you have a bank account you need to update something on the bank account right uh, on, uh, with using your service so as long as you have a one service this is perfectly fine and working really well because you can use in a status variable or something like that and you can deal with it right so that is why usually in a qa environment also we don't find this type of concurrency issues because number of requests are limited and most of the time we don't have a multiple scale um, situation in the qa environment but when you move into production maybe 200 instances are running from the same service that been 200 pods are running so that mean there is a chance same method executing in a same given microsecond in 200 times parallelly okay parallel 200 execution happen on the same method in a given same microsecond so now the uh, problem happens let's let's say you have a 1 2 3 is your uh, account and then the pod 1 is access in the same account trying to update something and then same time uh, the pod number 2 is trying to do the same thing on the same account now the problem is to how we can detect someone else is also doing the same thing the easiest way people come up with they use the redis key distributed redis key so they like say put a uh, they go and see in the redis hey do you have a key from 1 2 3 that 1 2 3 is our let's say object id id of the account it has to be unique key right so now you are going to see whether you have a key from that the redis says no then give me a put, write this key so now the service b go and check there is a key yeah key is already exists so service b is not trying to uh, write into this key we think problem is solved because when we have a, in our initial test yeah we can see the problem is solved right because because of the key is exist uh, redis is not uh, the service b is not trying to write but here the problem comes service a and b same time asking from the redis do you have a key for 1 2 3 this redis says no i don't so redis says that for the both service a and service b so service a create the key and service b also create the key right the nature of the redis is when you create a key it just create it if the key is exists is updated so now service a think okay i go, i i am the one who create the key i have to modify this account and service b think yeah i am the one who create the key i have to modify the service so a and b they are wrong because redis <laughs> accept their bo both of their keys right so now the problem comes so these type of cases you need to deal with in an atomic level that mean you go from you ask from the redis and come back with the results and you go and create the next in this millisecond microsecond of time maybe nanosecond of time can create problems because someone else may be there before you go back right before you check and you create that time slot someone else may occupy so therefore you need to use something there are certain redis command you can use atomic commands right for example increment and decrement right inccr and dccr so those commands are atomic commands so that mean so when you go there uh, like if you say you have a number you can say increase it you don't ask what is the current value you just say whatever the value you increase it the redis increase it and give it back to you right it is thread safe redis guaranteed it's only one thread at a time is executing so likewise there is a command called set nx set nx mean set if not exist right so with that what it does is you are saying let's say you are you, are, you don't use the classic redis key value command you use a set nx command So now what you do is service A go and say set index 
ஒன்னுக்கு can easily use to avoid this type of concurrence issues there are other ways if especially if you're using java you can use a synchronous block and so on so but those are limited to within the service but you need to always think when you implement something in production at any given time your service may scale that is called scalability you need to add the scalability feature to your service so otherwise you're going to screw up then It's a very simple video and I don't want to do an example for this. You can Google set 10 next how to use it. You can use it. Next time when you want to handle the concurrency, just don't create a memory variable or don't just create an uh, arbitrary lock in the Redis. Just create a distributed proper atomic lock using set 10 next. See you in the next video.